August 17th. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Luke 22, 31. That faith should be more frequently and severely assailed than any other grace of the Holy Spirit will cease to create surprise as we become acquainted with the rank and position it occupies in the renewed soul. Placed in the fairy front of the battle, itself the strongest and most determined and successful foe of the assailing powers of darkness and of sin, and effecting its overthrow, all their force, skill, and malignity are marshaled and directed. But who is its chief and most formidable assailant? It is Satan, the accuser of the brethren, the tempter, the sworn enemy of God and man. It is he, the master spirit of darkness and woe, who, without possessing a single attribute of deity, yet approaches so near the resemblance to the divine that in every place and in each moment of time he is present, closely watching, closely studying, and insistently working to deceive, and to overthrow where it is possible the faith of the very elect. By what power or agency is he enabled to prosecute the dark designs of his gloomy intellect, and to effect the malignant purposes of his depraved heart? We cannot now venture at any length to premise whether with the subtlety and velocity which belong to the light, there is an incessant expansion of thought, imparting a kind of personal omnipresence to the ruling mind of the infernal empire, or whether, without being personally present, we may account for the extent of his agency, operating alike in every place. And at the same moment, by supposing intelligence communicated to and commands issued from him through the medium of the innumerable hosts of Miradins who composed those principalities and powers over which Jesus triumphed, making a show of them openly, must, however strong the presumption, still remain points involved in much doubt and obscurity. But there is one fact respecting which we are not left to conjecture. I allude to the eager and restless mechanizations of Satan, to weaken, dishonor, and destroy the faith of God's elect. Satan has desired to have you. Observe here the limitation of satanic power in reference to the believer. This is its utmost extent. He has no power or control over the redeemed but that which God permits. He can but desire and long and plot. Not a hand can he lay upon them, by not a single temptation can he assail them. Not a hair on their head can he touch, until God bids him. Satan has desired to have you. There stood the arch foe waiting permission, as in the case of Job, to destroy the apostle of Christ. Dear reader, How consolatory is this truth to the believing mind. We have often trembled at the power of Satan, and perhaps very near as often have been the involuntary object of his implicable hatred and deep devices. But press now this animating thought to your trembling heart. He has no control nor influence nor power over a redeemed soul, but that which God permits and which Christ allows. Thus far shall you go and no further are words which reveal his inferiority, prescribe his limits, and arrest the progress of the proud fiend.